The conducting warrant officer for this afternoon's parade is Master Chief Petty Officer Class 2, Sean Best, a member of the Barbados Defense Force for the past 22 years. He has held several appointments, which include small boat coxswain, training chief, unit quartermaster sergeant, divisional chief administrative division, and divisional chief operations division of the Barbados Coast Guard. He attended and conducted training both locally and internationally to include Antigua and Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, England, and the United States of America. He's a level four CVQ assessor for the Technical and Vocational Educational Training Council of Barbados. Ladies and gentlemen, the parade conducting warrant officer, Master Chief Petty Officer Class Two, Sean Bess. You will notice that two officers just made their way onto the passing line in preparation to fall in and take over command of their platoons. These officers were the platoon commanders for recruit training course 122. Second Lieutenant Tevin Maynard, number one platoon commander, and Second Lieutenant Rico Eiffel, number two platoon commander. The conducting warrant officer will now hand over the parade to the parade commander, Lieutenant Ramar Haynes. Good evening, sir. I am 00222277, Master Chief Petty Officer Sean Bess, conducting warrant officer. Parade comprise one warrant officer, two senior non-commissioned officers, 12 junior non-commissioned officers, and boy to recruits, and open order at the shoulder, and awaiting the pleasure of your instructions. Sir, please. Carry on. Lieutenant Haynes enlisted in the Barbados Defense Force in 2015 as a member of the Barbados Regiment Reserves before transitioning to the full-time element of the force in 2016. He attended many courses, both locally and internationally, to include Platoon Commander's Course in Guyana, Infantry Command Course in the People's Republic of China, and Range Officer Course with the British Army Training and Support Unit in Belize. He currently holds a postgraduate certificate of competence in risk crisis and disaster management, a Bachelor of Science degree in human resource management, and a Master of Science degree with distinction in labor and employment relations. During his military career, he has held several appointments to include Platoon Commander Special Operations Company and both Platoon Commander and Training Officer at the Barbados Defense Forces Training and Development Institute. He currently serves as second in command of the Barbados Defense Force Training and Development Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon's parade commander, Lieutenant Ramar Haynes.
The parade commander will now fall in the officers. Yes, sir. The next phase of the parade will be the arrivals. The first arrivals will be our military dignitaries comprising the commanding officers of the various units of the Barbados Defense Force. Ladies and gentlemen, we acknowledge the arrival of Major Pedro Drakes, Commanding Officer of the Barbados Regiment, Lieutenant Commander Graham Rochford, Commanding Officer Acting, Barbados Coast Guard, and Major David Clark, representing the Commandant of the Barbados Cadet Corps. We acknowledge the second cadre of military dignitaries to arrive, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell, military advisor to the Chief of Staff, and Commander Mark Peterson, staff advisor to the Chief of Staff.
please stand for the arrival of Commodore Errington Sherlin, the Chief of Staff, Barbados Defense Force. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the Honorable Wilfred Abrams, Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs, the reviewing officer for this afternoon's parade, and kindly remain standing until the start of the inspection. The parade commander will now report the state of the parade to the reviewing officer and invite him to inspect recruit intake 122. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the reviewing officer returns to the saluting dais and as the parade commander seeks permission to carry on with the remainder of the parade. Please be seated. Drill is an integral facet of all militaries. It produces a soldier who is proud, alert, and obedient, while also forming the basis of discipline and teamwork. The parade will now march past in slow and quick time and paying of compliments to the reviewing officer. In slow time to the tune major minor and in quick time to service beyond duty, both composed by Director of Music, Barbados Defense Force Band, Captain Brian Cole, who is directing the band this afternoon. Commanding the number one platoon is Second Lieutenant Tevin Maynard. He joined the ranks of the Barbados Defense Force on the 15th of August 2019 through the Officer Cadet University Scholarship Program. On completion of his studies, he went on to do his basic officer training in Georgia, USA, where he successfully completed the Infantry Basic Officer Leader Course at the U.S. Army Maneuver Center of Excellence Infantry School. Second Lieutenant Maynard holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Political Science and History and is currently pursuing a Master of Science degree in E-Governance for Developing States. He is a proud graduate of the Parkinson Memorial School where he also sits as a member of the school's Board of Management. Ladies and gentlemen, number one platoon commander, Second Lieutenant Tevin Maynard. 
commanded the number two platoon is Second Lieutenant Rico Eiffel. He enlisted in the Barbados Defense Force in 2016 as an officer cadet through the Officer Cadet University Scholarship Program. He attended the Media Operator course during Trade Wings 2017. He performed the role of Data and Information Officer for Barbados Relief Care Package 2020. Second Lieutenant Eiffel holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science and Management from the University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus with second class honors. He is a graduate of the Initial Officer Training Program at the Caribbean Military Academy, Jamaica in 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, number two platoon commander, Lieutenant Rico Eiffel. A number of our fellow CARICOM military brothers in arms served as instructors on Recruit Training Course 122. We take this opportunity to acknowledge from the Jamaica Defense Force, Corporal Leylan Howe and Corporal Paul Taylor. From the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, Lance Corporal Gary Davidson and Lance Corporal Marlon France. And from the Guyana Defense Force, Corporal Dason Ryan and Corporal Avery Fraser. Let us give our visiting instructors a hearty round of applause.
Wasn't that an excellent display by the recruits? Let's give them another round of applause. The Reverend Hugh Sandiford, Barbados Defense Force Senior Chaplain, will now deliver the invocation. Pleasant good evening. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you. Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious Lord, this evening we join our hearts in prayer to you, who we acknowledge as the Most High God. We thank you for all your blessings in the good times and your times not so good. This evening we come before your presence with hearts of gratitude. We thank you for these 43 recruits who have been successful in completing their training. May the experiences gained during these four months of rigorous training be always etched in their hearts. Lord, we pray that they would always rely on you, stay focused, and never evade their responsibility. In difficult situations, may they be able to disagree without being disagreeable and to differ without being difficult. Lord, we know that with you, all things are possible. As they begin a new chapter in their lives, may they always remember who they are and set good examples and standards at all times. May they be eager and ready to serve this nation of Barbados and further afield with integrity. And Lord, we thank you for the instructors, and their labor of love, parents, guardians, and friends who support them along the way. Continue to bless the chief of staff, Commodore Arton Sheridan, all of our sirs and members of this great Barbados Defense Force, and may continue to serve with excellence. And now, Lord, we pray for all those who are here this evening at this pass out parade. And may your love, grace, and mercy abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you very much. And that was Reverend Esther Willoughby, a member of the chaplaincy team of the Barbados Defense Force. I now invite Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell, military advisor to the Chief of Staff, to deliver welcome remarks. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies, the Honorable Wilford Abrams, Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs, the Honorable Cynthia Ford, Member of Parliament for the Parish of St. Thomas, Her Excellency Linda Tagliatella, U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Mrs. Donna Cadogan, Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Civil Service, members of the National Security Review Committee, Commodore Arrington Sherlin, Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defense Force, Lieutenant Colonel, the Most Honorable, Jeffrey Bostick, former Minister of Government and one of our own, Mrs. Carol Roberts Reefer, CEO, NCF, Service Chiefs and head of, Heads of the Protective Services, Commander Mark Peterson, Staff Advisor to the Chief of Staff, Commanding Officers, Senior Officers, both serving and retired, Master Chief Petty Officer One, Austin Howell, Four Sergeant Major. Warrant Officers, Senior and Junior Enlisted Ranks, Members of the Media, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, and last but by no means least, Recruits of Training Course One 2022. I bid you all a blessed good evening. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of the Chief of Staff to extend a warm welcome to you, to all those who have chosen to join us here today, whether in person or via live stream, to commemorate the success of these recruits at today's passing out parade. Your presence here today demonstrates your commitment to the Barbados Defense Force and your support of these courageous young Barbadians who have chosen to serve their nation in the profession of arms. The significance of their decision to serve Barbados is magnified when we consider that we live in a period of declining societal values and escalating social decay. Notwithstanding the usual negative commentary on our youth, these recruits have chosen a noble and patriotic path. Theirs is clear indication that there is hope for the future of our country. Indeed, they truly deserve our praise and our support. And I invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to join me in a rousing round of applause for this recruit intake. As we can all appreciate, this day marks a significant milestone in the lives of these recruits as they embark on the noble journey of national service. Ladies and gentlemen, my duty, I dare say my privilege this evening, is to welcome each and every one of you to this personal parade. During this parade, you will witness the positive transformation which has occurred in these young people standing before you as they display their newfound skills, techniques, characteristics, discipline, and qualities. I also crave your indulgence to deviate slightly to acknowledge the dedicated service of the many Barbadian service persons on whose shoulders we in this Barbados Defense Force stand. From 1979 until today, officers and soldiers of the BDF have served, sacrificed much in service of this country. And as one orator, more learned than myself, once famously stated, never has so much been owed by so many to so few. When one considers the work of the force over the past 43 years, this quote by Sir Vincent Churchill can be considered most fitting to describe this force's service to Barbados. Ladies and gentlemen, I share this with you not as a distraction from today's outstanding ceremony, but to remind all those within the hearing of my voice that the service of the Barbados Defense Force is vitally important to this country. I share this to assure you that the service persons of this force are courageous dedicated and committed to serving this country. Most importantly, I share this to inform the recruits 
who are graduating today that you now join a proud community of service persons who represent the pinnacle of military professionalism in the Caribbean. To the recruits of this intake, as you begin your own military journey, please be cognizant that you will be required to prove yourself time and again to your peers, to your superiors, and more importantly, to the people of Barbados. As the newest members of the BDF, your conduct, your values, your leadership, and your example will always be under scrutiny, recognizing that the citizens of Barbados hold the BDF to a very high standard. From this day forward, your mission as members of the force is to strive for excellence in everything that you do. May you have a long and successful career in the service of this great nation, and may you continue to make your loved ones proud. While it gives me great pleasure to welcome all who have gathered to celebrate this occasion, it will be remiss of me not to extend a special welcome to today's reviewing officer, the Honorable Wilfred Abrams, Minister of Home Affairs and an avid supporter of the Barbados Defense Force. Sir, it is, pleasure, it is with great pleasure that we host you today and our other distinguished guests within the historic walls of St. Anne's Fort to witness this spectacle. Your presence and the presence of our specially invited guests adds great dignity and decorum to this important occasion. On behalf of the Chief of Staff, I wish to extend a welcome to the family, the friends, and the loved ones of Recruit Intake 1 2022. It is my pleasure not only to welcome you to this personal parade today, but also to welcome you to the BDF family. The recruits of this intake will now take their places as members of the BDF, as members of our family. And by extension, you, their loved ones, also become part of this great family. Of course, words of welcome are also extended to members of the viewing public who are joining us today via live stream and the members of the media who are covering this event. Ladies and gentlemen, each and every one of you have supported us in many different ways, particularly by your presence here today. For this, we express our great appreciation and we trust that you will enjoy the remainder of today's proceedings. On behalf of the Chief of Staff and the Senior Command of the Force, I am pleased to officially welcome all of you, wherever you are, to this culminating event to celebrate the crowning achievement of these recruits. Honorable Minister, Colleagues, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm obliged to you. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell, for those welcome remarks. The recruits will now be marched off the parade square in preparation for some wonderful displays to come.
Captain Paul Alexander was first introduced to the Barbados Defense Force at the age of 17 years in 2004 when he was recruited as a footballer in the Barbados Defense Force sports program. Fast forward to three years later when he was the recipient of a football scholarship to Hofstra University in Long Island, USA. There he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics with a minor in general business. On his return to Barbados in 2011, he was recruited into the regular element of the Barbados Defense Force and was awarded Best Recruit and Best in Academics. Since 2011, Captain Alexander has attended and successfully completed some 12 military courses, locally and internationally. Amongst the highlights of his career is Contingent Commander for the RSS Detachment, for Operation Safe Streets and Operation Sepetior in St. Kitts and Nevis in 2016 and Dominica 2017, respectively. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome to deliver the first part of the course report, Captain Paul Alexander, Officer Commanding the BDF Training and Development Institute. The Honorable Wilfred Abrams, Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs. The Honorable Cynthia Ford, Member of Parliament, U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Linda Tagliatella, the Lieutenant Colonel, the Most Honorable, Jeffrey Bostick, Member of the Defense Board. Chief of Staff, Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Everton Sherlin. Advisors to the Chief of Staff, Commanding Officers, Fellow Officers, Four Senior Chaplain, Four Sergeant Major, Other One Officers, Senior Non-Commissioned Officers, Enlisted Ranks, Especially Anybody Guests, The Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, A Pleasant Good Afternoon. I am Captain Paul Alexander, Officer Commanding the Barbados Defense Force Training and Development Institute. I have the humblest honor and privilege to deliver the final course report for Recruit Training Course 1 of 2022. The process of military training, particularly the indoctrination of young civilians into the military culture, is not a single event but a long and tedious process. It requires hard work, dedication, commitment, and trust, as these virtues are the ingredients of the total of military discipline. It further calls for a form of conditioning that motivates recruits to digress their personal preferences for the good of their country and organization. The purpose of recruiting is not to break recruits, but rather cognitive reconstruction geared towards comprehensive professional development into the military service. In fact, the crafty, complex combination of physical training, field exercises, and lecturing time provided the foundation to enable the recruits to become mentally resilient, physically robust, and overall competent in the basic military knowledge and skills. It's a tough process, but a rewarding one that all true and faithful soldiers value for life. This will enable each recruit to become a soldier whose discipline decisive, adaptive, and dedicated to a lifelong learning. One of the most difficult and essential lessons learned was self-discipline, as it introduced the recruits to a strict daily routine that entailed many duties and high expectations for which, as civilians, you are not accustomed to. Ladies and gentlemen, that ends the, culmination, that ends the introduction of the course report. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now be treated to two displays by the recruits. The first display will be a drill display. Drill forms the basis of teamwork and is seen as the foundation for aspects of military life. 
The recruits this evening will execute some precision drill movements, showcasing what they have learned over the last four months, from sentry drill to rifle and foot drill. Sergeant Keelon. Sergeant Keelon Mears, a 21-year veteran of the force and a conceptualizer of the drill display you will soon witness, comes forward to seek permission to conduct the display.
What a fantastic drill display by the recruits. This is solid evidence that lots of learning occurred over the past 16 weeks. Many of these recruits never participated in drill before. But what we have just witnessed is testimony to their hard work, commitment, and dedication. Let us give these recruits another rousing round of applause. <laughs> Captain Alexander will now continue the course report. The training was not only intensive, but demanding and required physical and mental agility to withstand a previously unimagined journey. The curriculum permitted the recruits many opportunities to develop their leadership and team skills as part of a personal and team development package. Integrating military doctrine, competency-based training, and innovative instruction, we move into the body of training with an instructional package focused on drill, marksmanship, map reading, first aid, skilled arms, tactics, signals, seamanship, repelling, etiquette, military history, customs, and courtesies. They undertook several adventurous training activities as well as physical and mental challenges, culminating with arduous phase of testing their free craft and military skills. The recruits were also given the opportunity to undertake in a wide variety of sports promoting fitness and agility along with rigorous field training program that pushed them beyond what they thought were their limits. We then traversed into the fundamentals of administration in bars, military ethos and values, optimal ways of indoctrinate, to indoctrinate the recruits into the barbarous defense forces culture and values were applied to ensure each recruit developed a personal culture of determination, grit and perseverance to carry with them throughout their military career. During the course's final phases, we focus on developing a mindset of the warrior by introducing a tactical training embraced by three arduous field training exercises. Much of the design and innovation in training was aimed at generating realism. Thus, to be effective, the training involved, involved battle inoculation, which replicated the conditions that they would face in any operational theater. Training realism is one of the key measures of training effectiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, that is part two of the course report. The second display will be a tactics display. Please be advised that there will be loud explosions heard during this display. Intelligence reports indicate that the four men on the block seen laming and drinking are involved in criminal activities. A pickup truck shows up. And an illegal transaction appears to be going on between these men. A patrol vehicle on surveillance duty is observing the behavior of these men. While waiting to confirm if a transaction is made, 
the radio in to request two internal security teams on standby. The suspects are seen taking packages from the car. On seeing a military assistance to the civil power, they open fire. The patrol swiftly disembarks and returns fire. Two standby patrols arrive to support the military assistance to the civil power. The suspects whose morale is clearly high Open fire on the internal security guard. Some brave soldiers just repel off the roof. And surprise the suspects. The soldiers tactically advance to fight through and destroy the enemy with speed and aggression. With all of the suspects being neutralized, the section commander calls for a reorg. One internal security team advances swiftly to provide security. The other team soon follows to disarm and conduct searches of the enemy. With all bodies checked off, the teams do a moving in bus, followed by a hasty extraction. Ladies and gentlemen, the tactics display you just witnessed was again a new area which the recruits had to embrace. And I'm sure you would agree with me that it was an excellent performance by the recruits. Please join me in giving the recruits another round of applause. Captain Alexander will now conclude the course report. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, soldiers in this force must be versatile and multi-skilled who can effectively thrive in dynamic and complex operating environments. Pursuing a military mission as part of a wider strategy. In the military, training never ends, and passing out here today is the only beginning of a lifelong journey of training, learning, bettering, and development. The recruits' minds symbolize an empty magazine, which needs to be filled with knowledge and experience before being engaged. It's now their task to integrate what they have learned to meet the challenges of the contemporary operating environment. Military service inherently attract those with a baseline level of courage and perseverance that makes them natural leaders. It gives me great pleasure to stand before this parade as we induct young people into this rank of the Barbados Defense Force. Undoubtedly, they will make a substantial contribution to the force's role in national defense and security. I'm sure that they have received the best training and are instilled with the noblest values associated with the with the, with the professionalism, of course, of the military life. 
availing myself of this meaningful opportunity, I ask you to recognize that great training re requires great trainers. As the instructors contributed to the sterling standard of the recruits' performance and exceptional turnout. Recognition goes to our CARICOM instructors from Guyana Defense Force, Jamaica Defense Force, and Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force. The displays you saw here today portrays the interaction among our three separate but overlapping training mantras. Confidence, competence, and excellence. I congratulate the recruits on their passing out for their demonstrated commitment which aided to achieve the important milestone in their lives. Your presence here is befitting an endorsement of your achievements. Recruits of VDF Intake 1 of 2022, you have made it, but, we, but you have not yet arrived. Embrace your challenges as it builds character. Be steadfast in your discipline and always be a symbol of excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you and do enjoy the balance of your evening. Thank you very much, Captain Alexander, for presenting the course report. The recruits will now return to the parade square for the awards presentation phase of the parade.
During the period of recruiting, the recruits were assessed in several areas to track their progress and to determine their suitability to join the ranks of the Barbados Defense Force. After careful review of those assessments, this afternoon the best performances in those areas will be rewarded. I now invite Commodore Errington Sherlin, Chief of Staff, Barbados Defense Force, to present the first set of awards. Best at Marksmanship, 2224064, Recruit Holder S. This recruit achieved the highest average score in both the pistol and rifle marksmanship tests and was consistent in his application of fire in all other range practices. Best at fitness, 2224048, recruit Ellis I. This recruit demonstrated a superior level of fitness throughout the course and was deemed best at fitness. This was determined by assessing both the recruit's strength and cardiovascular ability. Best at drill, W2224070, recruit King N. This recruit received superior scores in her drill assessment, displayed a consistently high standard of deportment, and performed well in the several drill competitions conducted by the drill instructors known as the Drill Off. Thank you, Commodore Sherlin, for presenting those awards. I now invite the Honorable Wilfred Abrams to present the next two awards. Runner-up, best recruit, 2224086, recruit Wiggins L.
This recruit's performance was deemed to be the second best scored across all subject areas, determined by the average results and the showcase of consistently good work. This recruit's overall performance was seen as a true embodiment of the BDF's motto, a symbol of excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, the best recruit for Recruit Training Course 122 is... Recruit 2224058, Recruit Greenwich J. Recruit Greenwich performed exceptionally well across all subject areas. Determined by his average results and his showcase of consistent hard work, he also showcased all the core values of the Barbados Defense Force. Courage, discipline, respect, integrity, loyalty, selfless service, and commitment to duty. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause to all the recipients of awards. Thank you very much, Honorable Abrams, for presenting those awards, sir. And I now invite you to deliver the feature address. Good evening. Recruits, you all actually get an answer for this one. Good evening, recruits. Good evening, sir. That sounds good. Honorable Ms. Cynthia Ford, Member of Parliament for St. Thomas, Your Excellency Linda Tagliatella, U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and Eastern Caribbean, Ms. Donica Duggan, Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Civil Service, Commodore Arrington Sherland, Chief of Staff, Barbados Defense Force, members of the Diplomatic Corps, service chiefs, and heads of the protective services. Mine doesn't actually have on the most honorable Jeffrey Bostick. And I'm pleased to recognize you and, reckon, and honor you here today because believe me, I'm gonna tell a story about you later. <laughs> Officers and enlisted ranks to the Barbados Defense Force, members of the media, specially invited guests, Recruits of training course number one of 2000 and 2022. Good evening. So first of all, for all those parents who are trying to restrain themselves, there's now your chance. Y'all can applaud to your heart's content. Please applaud. <laughs> Before I get into the meat of what I, I'm going to say, I smiled because I knew what was coming. And I smiled and I looked around for some of the parents. And I know exactly whose child was the first one off of our roof. 
because she almost passed out. There's a passing out parade, she almost passed out first. Um, and I, I commend all of the recruits. What you may not know is that all of the persons who were active participants in what was going on there were actually the recruits. All who jumped off the roof, all who jumped out of the vehicles, all of that, all of that was the same recruits who managed to get back there and change and get back on parade. So I want you to clap for that as well. So there's a message you can take back. You can take back the message of those who were left on the ground that crime does not pay. And you can also sell the message that if you choose not to go to crime, you can join the BDF force and jump off a roof. The last thing I want to say is it doesn't matter where you begin, it matters where you end. The recruits were sharp. They were very, very sharp. Very sharp. I've been to a number of personal parades. I've seen drill displays. Y'all were nothing short of impressive. Somewhere in there, somebody slipped. It's not your fault. You're wearing Blakey's, I know. We, we all have gone through that who wore Blakey's. But what was impressive for recruits and not hardened soldiers, is that although you slipped, you recovered so quickly, and nobody around you even paused. <laughs> that had we not been watching intently, we would not even have noticed that. So as far as I'm concerned, Commodore, it didn't happen. And I am the reviewing officer. The last thing I want to say before I get into the substantive speech is, as I said, it doesn't matter where you start. So I've been on this parade square as a cadet, and when I was a cadet, the commandant of the cadet corps was at that time Captain Bostick. And I went through all the rigors of being in cadets. I was on this parade square as a, a recruit. I was on this parade square at a camp um, as you are with a gun. I was on this parade square as part of the band. I was a drummer. I then had a bass drum. These are different years, by the way. And I ended up with the cymbals. And then the last time that I left this parade square, or the last time I was on this parade square, on the orders of the same Mr. Bostick, I was cleaning the parade square with a toothbrush. So my last memory of this parade square was all my hands and knees cleaning the prayer square with a toothbrush. And look where I am now, your reviewing officer. <laughs> so all that to say, you are now coming into the force at the bottom. Where you go from here is entirely up to you. So having said all of that, let me go. Today is an extremely special occasion for the recruits standing proudly before us. Young men and women from all walks of life who have risen to the challenge of serving their country in this very noble profession. These recruits have unquestionably conquered one of the most challenging undertakings of their young lives. With the steadfast support of their loved ones and the steadfast and often vocal support of the mothers in particular, they have accomplished what they set out to do four months ago, which was to complete basic military training in the Barbados Defense Force. Today is also notable for members of the Barbados Defense Force because they will soon have the opportunity to welcome 42 loyal, hardworking, and dedicated young citizens on whose shoulders rests the future of the military of Barbados. In fact, this pomp and pageantry display, displayed here today remind me of a quote by General George S. Patton, who said, the highest obligation and privilege of citizenship is that of bearing arms for your country. You have chosen to bear arms in defense of this 166 square miles that we call home. The Rock, our beloved Barbados. I want to express heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you for your dedication and the many sacrifices which you have made to gain entry into the force. You have done both yourselves and all your instructors proud this afternoon. 
with your immaculate smartness and your bearing on parade. The record will reflect that this recruit training program began with 68 willing applicants. And after many months of grueling training and challenges, 42 of you are left standing. Your achievement is unquestionably commendable, truly a statement of confidence, determination, and trust, which has been reposed in you by the instructors of the Forces Training and Development Institute. This passing out parade is a culmination of 16 weeks of training, which is engineered to transform civilians into military service persons who function in the interests of the national security of Barbados. Your training was intense. At times, it may have seemed impossible to achieve the high standards of this course. This was not by chance. Your training is designed, is designed to prepare you for a successful career in the profession of arms. This is not a calling for the weak or the faint of heart. Your instructors and the command of the Barbados Defense Force have provided a solid foundation for you to excel in an increasingly volatile, uncertain, complex, and fluid operating environment. Your chosen career is demanding, and you must be ready to answer the call to protect Barbados from all threats, both external and internal, and for the enforcement of all of the laws of Barbados. For the second time, the recruit training team comprised personnel from our Caribbean neighbors, Guyana, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago. At this time, I wish to offer my sincere thanks to those service persons who left their homes and their loved ones to come to Barbados and invest in this program and these recruits. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a round of applause. <laughs> to you, recruits. Rest assured that your journey has only now begun. I implore you fine young men and women to be beacons of light in your communities. May you walk proudly within your communities, armed with the knowledge that you have been called to serve and that you have answered that call. Be role models for the younger generation and be beyond reproach from the criminal element. Be that person to encourage positive change by your own personal example and always be mindful of the force's outstanding reputation. Be reminded of the motto of the Defense Force, symbol of excellence. Be guided by your force's core values and code of conduct. You are no longer civilians, nor civil servants. Therefore, some of the creature comforts to which you have become accustomed are going to disappear for you. But the sacrifices that you are expected to make will forever be present. For that is a central tenet of military service, to place your country above yourself. You can clap for that. <laughs> Permit me to speak about the importance of selfless service, integrity, and honesty. 43 years ago, standing confidently on the foundation laid by its predecessors and buttressed by hundreds of years of Barbados' military history, this Barbados Defense Force was formed in these historic walls of this St. Anne's Fort. Since its formation, there have been significant changes in the security landscape globally and regionally, and therefore in Barbados as well. Despite these changes, I am pleased to say that the BDF has risen to these challenges in defense of our country. The mandate of the Barbados Defense Force has evolved from its traditional concept of defense and security. It has had to respond to a wide range of multidimensional, intertwined, and complex challenges to the security and stability of Barbados. The Barbados Defense Force has built a solid reputation for its contribution to humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations, both in Barbados and abroad. The force rendered assistance to the Barbadian public at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, performing various tasks such as screening at the ports of entry, COVID-19 testing, transportation and accommodation of COVID patients, delivering care packages and providing logistical support for the COVID-19 vaccination efforts. The BDF has also conducted several operations over the last two years, 
including an RSS deployment to St. Vincent and the Grenadines post-eruption, humanitarian assistance to the people of Barbados after Hurricane Elsa, and support to the prison after and during the COVID-19 outbreak. I see the acting superintendent of prisons, De Carlo Payne here, and as the minister who is responsible for the prisons, I wish to thank the BDF from the bottom of my heart for stepping up to help us and to assist us. It is all one Barbados. The force has continued to upgrade its capabilities to remain relevant and more importantly, effective. For example, in recent times, the force has established the field medical facility. This capability continues to evolve, expand and improve and is currently a level one facility. Improvements have also been achieved in leadership, management, engineering and medical. The headquarters of the BDF is mindful of the force's motto and therefore continues to seek avenues to provide national and regionally accredited courses so that service members become qualified and proficient in their respective fields. Therefore, to the newly minted recruits, and quite frankly to all Barbadians, I can confidently say that the defense and security of Barbados is in good hands. I am sure that most people would agree that the military is a unique profession. Parents, it is one of the only professions which requires you to knowingly put your life in harm's way and where you may be required to make the ultimate sacrifice in defense of your country. The military is the last line of defense in Barbados when all else fails. This was evident during the COVID-19 pandemic. The enduring mission of the BDF, as cited in Section 5 of the Defense Act, Cap 159, is the defense of Barbados. The force's mission is enshrined in law, whereby it is required to protect this great nation against any threats, risks, or incursions. In any crisis, the people of Barbados expect the BDF to unilaterally or in partnership with other agencies protect their interests and preserve the quality of life that we all have come to enjoy. You, 42 new members of the Barbados Defense Force, will be called to service to assist in the ongoing fight against the scourge of illegal gun violence within Barbados or to protect our, border, or to protect our borders from transnational illicit trafficking. Additionally, there's a possibility that you may be deployed to an RSS or CARICOM member state on a joint and combined mission with security, engineering, humanitarian assistance, and other disaster response operations. The citizens of this country require you to remain focused, steadfast, and fully capable of undertaking any challenges that may come your way during your military career. The call to service requires the BDF to maintain exceptionally high standards of professionalism and discipline. Not just you, newly enrolled recruits, but all ranks of the force. Furthermore, you're obligated to consistently demonstrate impeccable moral and ethical conduct to maintain the trust of this nation, which is so readily reposed to the members of the BDF. By your everyday activity, by your carrying yourself on the street, by your interacting with people in your communities, people looking on should and must be able to say, he or she is a soldier and I am proud of them. The force's responsibility does not end at defense, but should continue to extend to being the moral compass for all Barbados and all Barbadians. In short, I challenge you recruits to be a credit to this nation wherever you go. As a recruit, you have passed one of the most physically demanding and mentally challenging courses of your military career. The first one is always the hardest. The security service person's skills and knowledge is a perishable skill that must be constantly honed through continued and advanced training. Continue to put your best foot forward and to train hard but safely. This is just the beginning for you. You will be challenged. From this point onward, you will be in the eye of the public and will be subject to intense scrutiny. Furthermore, 
I urge you to let the values of self-discipline, selflessness, loyalty, respect, and commitment to duty guide you along your noble career. When hardships arise, you must remember first and foremost that your duty is to your country. Each of you within this batch of recruits has the potential to be a future chief of staff or four sergeant major or even Minister of Home Affairs, Information and Public Affairs. From toothbrush to podium. <laughs> Believe in yourself. Place your trust in God. Trust your training and seek greater knowledge. It is expected that you will continue to serve Barbados with honor and distinction long after this graduation here today. I welcome you to the profession in arms. Serve with pride and dedication. To the families of the recruits, in the same way that you are here today cheering loudly for your sons and your daughters or your sisters, your husbands, your wives, in the same way that some of you are shouting them out by name as they jumped off the roof, and jumped out of the van in the same way that you are here to support them today. They will need your support and understanding in those times when duty calls and they have to sacrifice time and presence for the greater good. Finally, I charge all 42 of you to always remember this. This road ahead will be hard, but remember your duty is to God, country, family, and then yourself. And remember always, always, if there's nothing else that you take from what I've said here today, always place country above self. Congratulations to you all. Thank you very much, Honorable Abrams, for your very insightful and encouraging address. When a recruit is reflecting on their basic training, some of his or her worst memories and fondest will be of the instructors. The initial horror of early morning physical training, the endless hours of drill, the time spent racing across the bark square. Well, intake 122, it is finally all over. Now is the time for those dreaded and yet respected instructors to pay compliments to you and bid you adieu and best wishes as you join the rank and file of the Barbados Defense Force. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now witness the ceremonial instructors march off. Captain Paul Alexander, Officer Commanding Training and Development Institute and his team of instructors. <laughs> Lieutenant Ramar Haynes, Second Lieutenant Tevin Maynard, Second Lieutenant Rico Eiffel, Officer Cadet Josephine Aline, 
Master Chief Petty Officer Class 2, Sean Best. Chief Petty Officer Basil Brathway. Color Sergeant Hilroy Stout. Color Sergeant Akeem Horn. Petty Officer Romario Brooms. Sergeant Keelon Mears. Sergeant Kyle Mears. Sergeant Elford Chandler. Corporal Nicholas Bess. Leading Seaman Lamar Mears. Leading Seaman Troy Eiffel. Corporal Paul Taylor. Corporal Leeton Howe. Corporal Deshaun Ryan. Corporal Avery Fraser. Corporal Andrew Hurdle. Lance Corporal Gary Davidson. Lance Corporal Marlon France. Able Seaman Andre McLean. Able Seaman Shamar Aline. Lance Corporal Darion Daniel. Lance Corporal Baggio Harewood. Lance Corporal Kyle Mosley. Able Seaman Gabrielle Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and give a rousing round of applause to the instructors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the recruits recite the National Pledge. be seated. Sergeant Allen D will now march off the recruits in preparation for the amalgamation. The amalgamation symbolizes the acknowledgement of these once untrained personnel as having made the standard to be accepted into the rank and file of the Barbados Defense Force. These young men and women are now part of an illustrious institution and will carry on the proud legacy of a force that whenever called upon has been able to conduct the many tasks requested of them from humanitarian assistance and disaster relief to security operations, from military assistance to the civil power to community development. The Barbados Defense Force stands ready, willing and able. The trained soldiers are being marched on under the command of Captain Ashton Caddell. Captain Caddell enlisted in the Barbados Defense Force in 1999 and rose to the rank of corporal as a signaler. In 2007, he transitioned to the officer corps and immediately became a platoon commander at Paragon Base. He is a trained commando, having completed the commando course in Martinique in 2008. He is currently Officer Commanding Support Company, Barbados Regiment, and is completing a Bachelor of Science degree in International Relations at the University of the West Indies, Cave Hill Campus. He had the distinct privilege of being the aide-de-camp for five heads of state, including the current president, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason.
Captain Cattle will now seek permission from the Chief of Staff to march the recruits into the ranks of the Barbados Defence Force. The recruits are returning on parade under the command of Warrant Officer Class 2, Azard Reitz. Warrant Officer Reitz started his career in the Barbados Defense Force in 1992 in the Barbados Defense Force Sports Program as a footballer. He signed over to the Barbados Regiment in 1994, thus giving him some 28 years service to the Barbados Defense Force. He spent 10 years in the Special Operations Company and he served as admin NCO in the BDS Sports Program. He was attached to the training wing where he had the privilege to train some 10 recruiting badges. Many of these individuals are still active members of the Barbados Defense Force. Ladies and gentlemen, a symbolic moment we have all been waiting for, the amalgamation. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing review order, the final salute, and the departure of dignitaries.
That brings us to the end of the parcel parade for recruit intake 122. On behalf of the Chief of Staff, officers, and enlisted personnel of the Barbados Defense Force, I wish to congratulate our newest recruits, intake 122. How about another rousing round of applause for our new members of the Barbados Defense Force. We thank you for joining us both physically and virtually for this afternoon's proceedings. Please be seated as the dignitaries and specially invited guests are escorted. Ladies and gentlemen, you can follow the Barbados Defense Force on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where you can be kept abreast of our coming events. Speaking of upcoming events, on Sunday the 13th of November, you're invited to National Heroes Square for the annual Remembrance Day Parade. And on Wednesday the 30th of November, you're invited to Kensington Oval to join in the celebrations to commemorate the 56th anniversary of Barbados' independence at the Independence Day Parade. The Barbados Defense Force will be hosting Q in the community right here at St. Anne's Fort on Thursday, 8th December, beginning at 11 a.m. We hope to see all of you and your friends here. We now invite you to make your way to Lingwood Hall to join the recruits and soldiers for light refreshments. Do enjoy the remainder of your weekend. <laughs>